So thank you everyone um, for being here. Um, my name is John Johannes. For those who don't know me, uh, I'm here for the Center for uh, Gender Equity. And uh, UJT is very pleased uh, to host this uh, webinar on effective to launch the mentorship program. Uh, so one of uh, the activities of this center, which was established in February 2020, would be to link um, mentees with high caliber uh, mentors from across the globe. And um, I would like to thank our mentors uh, who have joined this program, our mentees from diverse backgrounds, and our speakers today who have been uh, our allies throughout this process, starting from the leadership training uh, that took place last year. So here with us, we have uh, our speakers, Professor Agnes Paho, Vice Chancellor of the University of Global Health Equity, uh, Dr. Peter Drobak, he is the Director of School Center for Social Entrepreneurship and UJT's visiting faculty. We have uh, Professor Lisa Hirschhorn, who is a professor uh, at Greenberg School of Medicine at uh, North Western University and also UJT's faculty. Eric Kaku, uh, I hope he will join us uh, soon. He's the co-founder and CEO of Entrepreneurial Solutions Partners. Uh, we have Dr. Katrin Klein, who is a strong ally uh, in our leadership program. She is a H. Bowman Professor uh, of Management and Vice Dean of Wharton uh, Social Impact Initiative. So uh, without much ado, uh, I will um, start the session. But uh, before that, uh, I would like to note that the last 10 to 15 minutes of this uh, webinar is expected uh, to be for um, Q&A. So in the interest of time, I would like to invite you to drop your questions in the chat box. Uh, our uh, discussion will range from um, what is mentorship, type of mentorship models, to uh, qualities of a good mentor and good mentee. And then uh, we'll uh, talk about challenges in mentorship programs and potential solutions for that. Uh, we will also have the last session for best practices in mentorship and what the role of different stakeholders will be in this program. Uh, so um, I'd like to invite Professor Agnes uh, to do the welcome and to give us a brief uh, background about TJG's mentorship program. So uh, thank you everybody for joining us. Uh, thank you, Lisa, Peter, uh, thank you, Catherine, Eric, and uh, Tion for really being a part of the development of this innovative program because it's a global mentorship program. Together, all together, mentors and Manti, we are over four continents. And uh, as Tion just said, the objective is really uh, to strengthen and to help young cadre in the global health field to find their position. Of course, we have to tell the truth. This program is target more the young women who have more problems than young men, but it targets both because we will never change uh, the condition of women without uh, the help of uh, the men and uh, changing a uh, global mindset. Uh, this come from a request from the uh, the advisory group, uh, the young advisory group uh, who who help us to uh, create the Women Lead and Global Health Conference uh, 2019. And it was repeated during uh, the conference, has a need for African young people, but also young people from Asia uh, and other parts of the world to help them to find their place. It's a two-year program. So uh, um, mentors who are here and mentees who are here, it's a commitment to grow all together uh, during two years um, and so this cohort go for two years and at the end of this year we will recruit the second cohort who will also go for, tr for two years so we will have uh, at the same time two cohorts and we will convene in Kigali um at the end of the two years uh, so each year there will be a convening in kigani so it's to create network to sustain network to help each other uh, horizontally and also uh, vertically uh mentors mentees uh, and also we want to help mentors to be good mentors and mentees to be good mentees uh and um 
I'm going to let uh, the expert in this field uh, to go in the detail. Uh, but what we want is the mentees of today to be the mentors of tomorrow, but really tomorrow because the world needs uh, transfer of skills in this field uh, more than ever. And the pandemic we are seeing now, uh, the role of each other in global health in this uh, we see now uh, cannot contradict that. Thank you, Tsiyong. Back to you. Thank you, Professor Agnes. Um, next, uh, Professor Lisa will give us an overview of uh, what mentorship means and uh, what kind of formats it can take. So thank you very much. And, and thank you very much, much uh, Dr. Agnes and Sion for inviting me. This is an incredible honor. And just one very quick story before I start. When I left the, uh, the Women Leaders in Global Health Conference, which was incredibly inspiring, I went on to Nigeria. And while I was picking up my um, bags, I noticed a young woman next to me who had one of the bags from, from the conference. We struck up a discussion and I've been mentoring her ever since. So it's uh, it's really an incredible network that, that you are creating. So um, first of all, with thanks to the Searle Center who very uh, nicely sort of helped uh, contributed some of these slides. So first of all, what is mentoring? So mentoring is a collaborative learning relationship. So it really is bi-directional that proceeds very through purposeful stages over time and really has the primary goal of helping mentees acquire the essential competencies that are needed for success in their chosen career. And embedded that, it's critical for how do we do it and what are the essential competencies. Next slide. Next slide. Yes. I can try to download them. Apologies for this delay. OK, so the, you have to recognize that when you're a mentor, you may be one, two, or all four of these roles. And what first is being a mentor, the classic mentor, is passing on advice and knowledge and experience. But you also may be in the setting where you're their supervisor. For example, if you are in a lab, the person who's uh, your PhD student or your graduate student. So you might be overseeing their tasks, their research progress, uh, some of their day-to-day -day goals. You might also be a coach, so you might be supporting and enabling them in learning and development. And very importantly, you might be a sponsor, so you might be proactively advocating for their success, putting them up for awards, uh, inviting them to come and speak on panels, et cetera, et cetera. And it's very important as you think about the mentor-mentee relationship, which of these roles are you actually going to be playing and being very clear about how you're going to achieve them. Next slide. So it's, there's really sort of five main areas of effective mo uh, mentoring and research, and I'm focusing this on research. There's obviously other, other areas in which mentoring happens. The first is the most classic, which is the researcher scholarship, which is the one that I know a number of people are very familiar with. But in addition to that, there's areas of interpersonal. So how do you actually mentor and coach somebody in their interpersonal relationships? Uh, they're psychosocial in their career. We heard a lot at the Women Leaders in Global Health Conference about the tension between being a woman who's either entering um, the time at which she's starting a family or has a family exactly at the same time that she's working in her career. How do you mentor and coach somebody in, in culturally responsive and diversity? How do you make sure that they are uh, and become a, a expert in diversity and inclusion? And finally, um, how do you actually figure out sponsorship? There's a number of, uh, and you'll get these slides of tables that go through some of these, and I'm just gonna show a couple of those. Next slide. Yeah. Yes. Um, it's not showing on your no. right. No. I can just talk through them. Um, I have it up now on my on my screen. I don't know that I can necessarily share my screen. Um, but in research, for example, I think it's probably the most straightforward. Are you helping people who are developing technical skills, disciplinary research skills, understanding sort of what the knowledge of that is. But in, this, in the tables, when, when you'll get them, you'll see that there's actually measurable learning objectives from the mentor, but also for the mentee. Because again, it's very important that this be a, a bi-directional. So 
For example, the, a mentor may teach the mentee to design and carry out a research project, but the mentee has to really know that they are developing these skills to design and carry that out. So there's this sort of bi-directional um, needs. For interpersonal, this is something that's a little bit, um, perhaps a little bit more challenging, but very important. For example, listening actively. Uh, mentors need to give their undivided attention, so no reading emails while you're doing virtual mentoring, and listening both to their mentee words and their emotion. And this is going to be an interesting challenge as we do this virtually. And similarly, mentees need to do the same thing, to give their undivided attention and listening to their mentors. They need to be building trusting and honest relationships, so the mentors have to give honest and open feedback on how the mentor-mentorship relationship is progressing, and the mentees also need to feel free and open to give that type of feedback. Um, so for psychosocial and career, again, you can see there's a number of different areas, uh, for example, developing the mentee uh, career self-efficacy. So this is not somebody who is going to remain dependent on you, uh, that you need to foster and affirm their career aspirations, even if they're different than your own. And similarly, the mentee has to seek those types of opportunities. Next slide. Okay. I've just, um, so the other the other ones again are on uh, culturally responsive and diversity. And so, uh, how can mentors employ strategies for recognizing and addressing some of the issues of equity and inclusion? And the mentees also need to identify some of these strategies. Mentors need to be culturally responsive and negotiate dialogue across diverse dimensions, particularly when you're bringing together mentees and mentors from very different. Um, uh, backgrounds. And again, the mentees need to similarly participate in this as well. And finally, for sponsorship, this is probably one of the most important things that senior uh, mentors can do for their mentees um, in terms of act actively advocating and amplifying what they're doing, promoting professional development, uh, and, and finally fostering independence. So again, you want to mentor your way uh, out of the, um, you know, to become even more equal over time. So the mentorships can actually last for many, many years. So again, they're complex because you may be taking over many of these roles. And um, at the very end is a matrix that I found very useful to sort of figure out what are the different roles in which you as a mentor you'll, you'll be um, playing. And in those different areas of interpersonal research and academic and psychosocial career planning and culturally responsive and diversity, as well as um, sponsorship, where will you actually be playing and what will some of those roles be? Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Lisa. Apologies for the challenge with the slides. No worries. Uh, yeah, it was a great explanation for mentors, mentors and mentees to look at what kind of relationship they can have. And uh, we maybe we'll have a lot of questions during the Q&A. Uh, next, I'd like to invite uh, Peter Drobak uh, to give us uh, some information on uh, qualities of a good mentor. Um, I'd like to note that uh, Peter has to leave early for following this uh, presentation, and I would like to thank him for his time. Thank you, Sion. Uh, hello, everyone. Great to be with you, and uh, apologies in advance that I won't be able to stay for the full session. I have uh, um, to teach um, right after this, unfortunately, and, and, and couldn't move that. Um, so Lisa, who's one of the best mentors I've ever worked with, laid a lot of these things out already. Um, but I just want to talk maybe a bit conceptually about a couple of uh, a, a couple of qualities that, at least in my experience, can make for for a really good mentor. And the first is being generous, and that's generous with. Um, with with time, with attention, and with what much more than that. If you think about what Lisa just laid out, being a good mentor really is an investment of time. Um, like all good relationships, it's built on trust and effective communication. Those things don't come overnight. Uh, a lot of folks who may be in demand as mentors, of course, are going to be in positions of responsibility, and they're always going to be busy and have demands on their time. And so they really have to be willing to put in the time um, to give give you, the mentee, what it is that you need and invest in that relationship. And so the best mentors are people that see the value in it and enjoy doing it and will come back to that as well. But it's not just about 
being able to commit the time um, to build this relationship on an ongoing basis, but also about the attention and when the, you're together, actually prioritizing the time and the interaction together. Um, uh, you know, one who's distracted doing other things, who's on their phone, um, et cetera, et cetera. You know, in, in any setting is not going to be able to communicate effectively. So when you do have that time together, it's important that your mentor is fully invested in that conversation and when you and and very much present in um, in the in the moment, and you can see this in potential mentors because this is the kind of um, behavior that can be be modeled. And a great mentor is also a great role model. You know, a, a, a mentor for you may not be the person with the job that you want to have someday, uh, but it's a person who demonstrates the kinds of qualities or the impact in the world that you'd like to have. Um, and it sometimes can be a different role or a different kind of expertise. Um, so generosity number one. Um, second is being receptive. Lisa pointed out that mentorship is really a two-way street. And so it's not about the all-knowing expert bestowing knowledge on the passive vessel, the mentee to kind of receive that wisdom. And anyone who goes into a relationship thinking that is not someone who you want to have as a mentor. Um, a good mentor will understand that, um, that actually there's an opportunity for she or he to gain a lot from that relationship as well. Um, and that uh, are going to be open to new ideas, different kinds of experience and expertise, and also to understand that they, the mentor, may not have all the answers, that they need to try to understand what your goals, life experience, challenges, context is that may be different from, um, from what I have. And so my goal as a mentor is not to make a mini me, but it's to be open to and understand your experience and then to provide um, some, some useful guidance, um, some useful guidance from there. And that's something that, again, you can see in the way that a person, a potential mentor models their behavior, who they surround themselves with, who they interact with, um, et cetera. Um, and then finally, patience. Uh, this takes time um, to build this kind of relationship and to do it. And, um, it, it. and in many settings, we may get impatient and feel like we just want to give the answer. Um, and that's not the way to build a good relationship. A good mentorship relationship all, is often a journey um, and a journey of, of, of exploration and discovery. And a good mentor will help a person find their way to the answers themselves as opposed to telling them what to do. Um, uh, and again, it's part of that kind of bi-directionality but that's something that also um, sometimes takes time, but it's much more impactful over time if the mentee is able to get that place herself or himself as opposed to just being told what to do. Um, so those are some, some qualities. One other thing I just wanted to point out since um, I won't be with you a little bit later in the hour um, is, you know, that, that you don't have to have only one mentor. And in some cases, it can be really useful to have a couple of different voices. Um, there's a concept of the personal board of directors. That could be the two or three or four people who might be quite different in terms of what they do, who they are, where they are, where they come from, whatever. We're all people who are invested in me, whom I trust and admire and look up to. And I can call on them at different times in different ways for different reasons, or they can be sounding boards. Um, and so you don't have to have only one mentor, but it might be really worth thinking about over time cultivating a couple of different mentor relationships that can really help you over time and people that you can call on when you really need them most. I'll pause there. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Peter. Um, thank you. Uh, I'd next like to call um, Dr. Kathleen Klein, uh, Vice uh, Dean of uh, Wharton School of uh, Social Impact Initiative. Um, as uh, Peter talked about qualities of a good mentor, uh, we would next like to hear about qualities of a good mentee and from that, um, after that challenge in a mentorship program, uh, so that we can learn from these experiences. So welcome to the podium, uh, Dr. Katrin. Okay. I think you can hear me and see me. Yes, nod something. I'm going to assume. Thank you, Peter. Uh, so uh, it's great to be uh, participating in this session, and thank you to everyone who's organized it. Uh, it's, you know, this is such a such a great program. Uh, I'm just sorry we can't be in Kigali, um, but one day. Um, so I'm uh, happy to talk about the qualities of a good mentee. I'm going to um, reiterate some of the things that that Lisa and Peter said. 
Um, and, uh, and, and like Lisa, let me start with a story because I was inspired by your story. Um, I'm thinking of a woman um, uh, who I met about 10 years ago in an airport. So Lisa described meeting somebody in an airport who became a mentor, a mentee. This is very much the case for me. We were, had some time at an airport. We noticed each other's sweatshirts and, and, and I was wearing a Wharton sweatshirt. And um, this young woman and I got to speaking and um, she said, you know, maybe I want an MBA or maybe I want a PhD. And I said, and we talked a while longer and I said, you know, you want a PhD. So for all of you who have a PhD, you know that it's a very different degree than a master's degree. And, um, you know, and I rarely give that advice. And I had a very long list of, like, if you're serious about getting into a good PhD program, here are some of the steps you'll need to take. And you need to think very deeply about this. And then she flew, I flew back to Washington, D.C. She flew literally to Algeria where she was working. Uh, and, you know, some four, five, six weeks later, I hear from her. I'm so sorry I haven't been in touch. My father died in the interim, but I've had some time to work on what you described. And here's what I've learned. And here's what I'm thinking. And I would love to follow up with you. I was like, oh, my God, nobody follows up like this. Nobody says, comes back and says, I've done what you've said. I've learned from it. It was helpful. Let's keep talking. So I, that's a huge amount of what it takes to be a good mentee, a good protege. Um, and we've talked about it being a, a two-way street. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with one metaphor, and then I'm going to go with another metaphor that I think really works, but it's a little funny. Um, so one metaphor as I'm thinking about this is playing catch with somebody or playing tennis with somebody. Do they return the ball? And, you know, you can only have a, tennis is probably a good example, right? You can only have a good tennis match if both of you are returning the ball. And if, if your mentor or a potential mentor hits you the ball and you do not return the ball, well, then you're not going to play tennis. Um, and it really should be mutual. The, I will say that that's a better metaphor, I think, than the one that was coming to my mind, which was playing catch with a dog that doesn't return the ball. So if you've ever had a dog that you wanted to play catch with and the dog didn't return the ball, well, you don't play catch very long. Um, so the, the mentee, the protege has to return the ball. What does that mean? Um, and it means um, being appreciative, saying thank you. Thank you so much for this. I, I, it means taking the person's advice and input and trying it. Or saying, wow, you suggested such and such. That was such an interesting idea. I wasn't able to implement this or I was concerned about implementing, here's what I thought. So it's really this quality of mutuality and responsiveness. So, um, so things to reinforce this message. Uh, remember your mentor is a volunteer and you wanna make it enjoyable for the mentor to give to you and for the mentor to, you know, uh, for really to be a two-way street, to be interactive, to say thank you, to ask questions. Um, remember that, uh, like Peter said, your mentor is just one person, and it's often good to not think, okay, I have one mentor who's going to solve all my problems. Good idea to have lots of mentors. Your mentors may be your peers. Your mentors may be your children. Your mentors, uh, you know, you have mentors all over the place, people you can use for advice and input, and, and you should. Um, I think um, it's, a, it's important to take appropriate risks and be vulnerable and let your mentor or your mentors really know what you're looking for. Um, it's important to ask questions and say you know, what you want and show curiosity. It's important to be prepared and to show up. Um, and uh, you know, really it's, like, it's important to be, you're entering a relationship, you're entering a relationship with somebody who is giving you their time and their expertise and you need to make it enjoyable and, and worthwhile. Um, I'll tell you another example of being um, a mentor. Uh, so I've actually been the mentor for a young woman. I always refer to her as a young woman. She's not young anymore. I've been the, her mentor for 30 plus years. I met her when she was 13. I was supposed to be her mentor. She was maybe 12, 12 or 13. At the end of this, she gave me a hug at the end of that first meeting. I was like, okay, I'm in, <laughs> you know, because <laughs> I'm a sucker for a, a young girl who gives, you know, who gives me a hug. Um, and, but that's the quality of this woman, how much she gives, and we have stayed in touch for 30-some for years. 
Um, I am now mentoring her son, who is a freshman at a uh, you know, first year college student, just finished his first year at the University of Pennsylvania. And last week he said, we're, we're texting. And, I, and he told me he had a job interview coming up. And I said, great, let's do a mock interview at noon tomorrow. And he texted me back and he said, okay, that should work. And I'm like, no, <laughs> like, no, that's not what you say. Lisa, thank you for that looking like, like, and I literally said, to him, no, you know, you cannot say that. What you need to say is, thank you so much. I really appreciate you looking out for me. Would it be helpful if I sent you a video invitation? Like, show the appreciation, show the enthusiasm. And, you know, and he said to me as we're texting, like, okay, thank you. I get that. That's so helpful. I may appear mellow, but I'm really enthusiastic. It was like, no, you don't appear mellow. You appear rude. I know you're not rude. I know you, you know, I know that you care, but you're going to have to demonstrate it. Um, so those are, those are qualities that I would really say, like when people say to me, oh, my Lord, Catherine, you've been mentor for this woman for 30 years. You're an amazing mentor. My answer is, I'm not an amazing mentor. She's an amazing mentee. And, and that's real. You, you have a huge amount of power and influence in this relationship. Be an amazing mentee. Um, so that, that's what I would say. Sam, do you want me to continue or you're muted, so we're not hearing you. Yes, uh, I would like you to continue about uh, challenges in mentorship programs, um, maybe share some personal experiences and uh, potential solutions. Yeah, I would. I'm happy to do that. So uh, here I can talk um, a little bit about personal experience, but this time I, I really look to the research evidence on what do we know about mentoring programs and, um, and you know, did a quick, a, a quick review of research. So here are some of the, the things that the research evidence says on what makes it a good uh, mentoring program. Um, one of the things that the research, we know from research is it's smart as Peter and I and others have suggested to think about having many mentors and think about having a, a mentoring network, not just a mentoring one-on-one -on -one relationship. So we know that, you know, it can, uh, and a lot of what these questions, these issues deal with is how do you make a relationship work? And um, because as we've described, you know, when mentoring works, the mentor is engaged and paying attention and generous. The mentee is responsive and helping fuel this relationship. And there's a really great tennis, tennis game happening uh, with the balls going back and forth. Um, but that can break down. So one thing to remember, so I'll go through a few of these. One thing to remember is that a network is useful. It's not necessarily just one relationship. Um, what the research says, and, I, and, I, and this may be a challenge in this online program, but it's very interesting. What the research says is it's very helpful to have some mutual choice in the selection process. So if, if potential mentees can say, I'd like to work with one of these three people, and mentors can say, I'd like to work with one of these three people, and you can do more of a match, or I'm particularly interested, having some ability, some sense of mutual choice um, you know, assigned mentors can work, but some, some element of mutual choice can be very helpful. Um, a third point is that um, having clear goals and expectations, what are we trying to do here? What is the mentee looking for? What is the mentor provided and able to give? That can be helpful. I mean, again, sticking with my tennis metaphor, it's useful to know that we're going to be playing tennis. And if it's instead, it's, well, we could get together and have lunch. We could get together and have dinner. We could have a phone call. We could have a video call. Uh, you know, maybe we should uh, take a walk. All of that at some point when, early in a relationship can be too many options, not enough structure. So having some clear goals and expectations and training programs like this uh, is helpful. Um, as a general rule, people find that the frequency of meetings, more meetings is good. You'll have a better relationship with your mentor if you talk every month, every other month, four times a year, even two times a year, not just once a year. So some more frequency of meetings uh, is, uh, is helpful. Um, and uh, 
And I think the other thing just in, in programs that I would uh, would mention, maybe two other things. One is it's important that bo both the mentee and the mentor have realistic expectations. You know, not every mentoring relationship works. Not every mentor can answer all of your questions about everything. Not every mentee is going to, um, you know, run with the ball, be the greatest tennis player uh, of ever. The relationship may not work. And I think you need to be realistic about that. And then the last thing I, I think that we know from a lot of research uh, and we know from personal experience is that psychological safety is important in any relationship and in any team. And psychological safety is this notion that it is safe for me. I feel personally psychologically safe showing up being vulnerable, saying I don't know, admitting what you don't know, asking uh, asking for input, uh, and and so on. So those are things that I think are can be really helpful and that the research says can make for a great mentoring relationship again, a network, some mutual choice, clear goals, expectations, more frequent meetings, more structure, realistic expectations, and, and psychological safety. So let me thank you. Stop there, my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, Erika Ku has joined us. Yes. Uh, welcome, Eric. Hello, how are you? We are fine. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, Thank you for having me. Yes. So, so far we've been uh, talking about mentorment and um, challenge in mentorship programs. Uh, now I would like to invite you to talk a bit about based practices in mentorship programs and uh, what the role of um, mentors, mentees as well as uh, organizers should be. Okay. Thank you, Shan. So, um, I mean, first of all, I feel like the number of the things that I have prepared to say have already been covered by the speakers that came before. So if I repeat some of the points that they have said, uh, just take it as a way to emphasize some of the key messages, which to me are really, really important. Uh, the first thing that I would like to say is that um, I actually came to realize the value of mentorship you know, both at the personal level, but also in grooming leaders uh, from, from personal experience, but also from some of that we're trying to coach entrepreneurs. So um, personally, when I think about some of the things that I've managed to achieve in life, I feel like mentors have always been there, whether it is uh, books I was involved with, schools I ended up, you know, going to, uh, whether it was the sort of choice of careers, so somehow mentors are there, but often they are the heroes that we don't talk about a lot and that people don't see. But I would like to really insist on the fact that uh, mentorship is really, really important because often a good mentor or good mentors, as some of the other speakers have said, are going to be the missing ingredient between the potential that you have and what you end up being able to produce or they are going to also be the missing ingredient between uh, the insights you gain in class and some of the lessons that you've learned in theory and the impact you have in real life, and also the missing ingredient between your plan and what you are able to do in terms of the concrete path you get on. So what I really want to insist on first is that actually mentorship is a critical ingredient of success. And I'm grateful that uh, UPHE is trying to put in place this program for uh, you as students. Uh, in terms of best practices, I wanted to use an acronym to describe what I'm going to discuss. The acronym is basically TRACE, T-R-A-C-E. I repeat again, TRACE, T-R-A-C-E. I'm going to apply TRACE both to the mentors and to the mentees. So stay with me as I go down the list for each one of those two groups. So I will start with the mentees. The first thing uh, there in terms of the T is really to think. Uh, before you engage in a relationship, before you, you, you basically have a mentorship conversation, make sure you think, make sure you prepare. So it's not really the place to come and really have a stream of conversations that's more than where you just talk with, that, with no real structure without being very clear about, you know, what you're trying to get out of 
the conversation. So it's important that you have really been able to think and to prepare. So that's for the team. The second thing is to focus on the results that you are looking for, right? The R for Mantis stands for results. And those results, the more you can make them smart goals, the better it is. So, yes, you know, and I have been there. We've always used the mentor sometimes because we feel down and they really, you know, help us pick us up and they give us sort of the speech that helps us go. But what will really make a difference long term is that you come to the mentorship relationship with clear, smart goals you're trying to achieve. The third letter, which is the A, goes for accepting. What I mean by accepting is really being receptive to the feedback that they give you. Think of your mentor as somebody who's holding a mirror uh, and you are the person looking in the mirror. So sometimes they have to point things about you that you don't like, right? Uh, but the only way you get you to your goals, the only way you make some progress, if you, if you are receptive to what they say. So the third letter from Monkeys, so the A would stand for accept, accepting. Number four is being candid. Being candid. What I mean by that is often we pick mentors that we aspire to be like, or mentors who we think have a quality or a skill or achievements that we haven't had in our life. So sometimes we feel like, oh, if maybe I could impress them. Guess what? You are not in a mentor-mentee relationship to try and impress somebody. The mentor who's working with you, you know, yes, they want you to make progress. The way you will impress them is by the impact you have in life, by the progress that you make, by the fact that you can actually do well in, in achieving your goals. But in any one conversation, you are not there to impress them. So you have to tell them the truth. You have to be candid, right? Candor is the C for mentees. And number five is basically empathy. What I mean by empathy is that, I mean, I think Catherine said it clearly. Empathy is really the bedrock of any good relationship, right? Empathy is really about recognizing that life happens for all of us, right? So you have days when you reach out to your mentor, or uh, you talk and you're like, oh my God, no, the conversation today wasn't as great as usual. It's normal. You try to reach them, they are not available. It happens. Life happens. You also check on them. You know, how are they feeling? What's happening? And I think I like um, one of the points that uh, the second speaker made around the fact that it had to be a two-way street. I think it is in the empathy that the two-way street really, really happens, right? So now, now that I've talked about trace for Montees, think, respect, accept, tender, and empathy, I'm going to describe the same trace for mentors, right? For mentors, number one is really willingness and ability to transmit. And often, what we have to transmit is not necessarily solutions. You know, sometimes for your mentee to feel like you are actually able to be vulnerable uh, and to be really, uh, to, to really relate to what they are trying to do is a way for you to transmit, right? Second point, which is the air, is respect. You know, respecting our, our mentees is actually very important. It comes with trying to be confidential, so making sure that stuff that they discuss with us doesn't end up, you know, in a chat somehow, because that's really the most disrespectful thing that a mentor can do. It's knowing that they are really trying. I mean, assuming that they are really, really trying. Um, the A stands for being able to accompany them. And I think the accompaniment was described very well uh, in the first presentation in terms of the different things that mentors can do to create value. But we really, really have to really stand by the side of the mentees to really push. Uh, the C and the E are the same. It's about tender. For a mentor, it may mean saying, look, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I would find out. Or, you know what? I'm not the best person to talk to you about such a thing. You know, try and talk to somebody else. I know somebody who I think you should, you should talk to. And, you know, the E is, again, the sort of empathy. So I really feel like if we can put in place and in practice these, those kind of traits for both mentors and mentees, it makes for very, very good programs. Now, how do we make that happen? What we have found in our practice, it helps to have 
a clear commitment in place. So what we will do often is we will have some sort of a contract. Uh, and I know the word contract sounds very, very strong. It sounds too serious. But it has to be that serious. We will have a contract between the organizers, the mentors, and the mentees, which are going to lay down some very specific rules, right? You know, rules which are indicative terms for which we talk. Confidentiality. You know, not really trying to kind of steal ideas, you know, respect for somebody else's idea. Not trying to take advantage of the fact that the mentee is going to be very open and sort of like a vulnerable to maybe invest, you know, with terms which wouldn't be good in the businesses. So there are a number of things that have to be captured in some sort of the contract, which to us are actually very, very important for mentorship programs that work. Because it sets the stage, it creates boundaries, and it avoids a scenario where things go basically all over the place, number one. Number two, which is really critical, is the ability to actually monitor and track down what's happening. And this is tricky because you don't want to get into the details of what the mentors and the mentees are discussing because that's confidential. But we need to find out enough that we can actually assess that there is progress here. And if there is no progress, maybe it's because the binome that we have created between the mentors and the mentee doesn't work. I mean, we have seen cases where we have, uh, you know, five mentors and five mentees and we switch them and some pairs don't work when in fact other pairs are magic, right? So somehow it happens, right? So it's really important to be able to track down the results, be able to monitor what's really happening. I think that's the second thing that's really important. And I would say uh, the third thing which is really critical is to make sure that you have times when you bring together the group of mentors and the group of mentees. I think Agnes mentioned that when she was starting. In our experience, this is actually extremely powerful and very, very effective because it creates a network, and those networks are very, very good in making sure that things So in terms of uh, you know, best practices, this is what I can say. Uh, I'm going to leave you with two uh, parting thoughts. One of them is a quote. And the second one is just a conclusion coming from me. So the quote is from Oprah. Oprah says that uh, a mentor is someone who allows you to see the hope inside yourself. You know, I really hope for the program that we are going to work on that we can create something which really allows each and every single participant to see the hope inside themselves. The reason for that is very simple. If that happens, it's going to be fantastic for public health on the continent. And then, you know, the parting thought is actually an apology. I had confirmed and promised to be at the conference in Kigali. Uh, I couldn't make it because I became a dad and my little one had to go through a small sort of procedure. I did not know what it was. When afterwards I described it to Agnes, she was like, oh, this is very simple. Uh, but I felt the right thing for me to do was to be uh, with my family at this time. And I'm very excited to be with you as we start this adventure together. So thank you very much. This is really what I wanted to share. Thank you, Eric. Um, very interesting points. Uh, we have uh, a couple of questions from the participants and we'll go straight into the Q&A uh, session now. Um, one of the questions um, was that the, uh, why, the, why uh, the program is two years long and um, Given that the program is years long, if there would be an opportunity to um, see, reevaluate the, re the relationship and swap uh, mentors and main. Any of the speakers uh, who would want to reflect on this? Um, this is Lisa, I'm happy to reflect on it. I think it's a, it's a very good point. And the answer is it depends. So some mentorships are indeed for life and other ones are actually appropriately time limited. Um, I will, will defer to Dr. Agnes and Sion about, about the duration, but I don't, I'm assuming that the duration does not mean at the end of two years the relationship ends, but it really is a decision about the ongoing um, value to the mentor and the mentee. Um, I mentor medical students, um, and so it's by definition a sort of four-year commitment uh, from when they start to the end of four years. For a few of them, I continue that mentorship, but not for all of them because their needs uh, for, for a mentor will continue. Now, some of them come back. Um, I have one who I'm mentoring now. I mentored as a medical student. He's now a junior faculty, but has 
come back into the same arena and we've reestablished a mentor menteeship. So I think the answer is it depends on the value. And I, I love the, the trace uh, component and sort of understanding does that work and what are the components in which uh, that mentorship may happen. So it may be that you are no, you're no longer a supervisor. Uh, you may not even be a, a coach, but you may still be available to sponsor them as they need you know, letters of recommendation or, or more gen general career approach. But I, I'd love to hear, Tion and Agnes, the, the vision that you had about the concept of two years. So the two years is the time we are facilitating officially with regular coming together, regular training for mentors and mentees uh, and after that of course it will continue I, I can tell a story when i was in the national aids control commission uh, i start mentoring um, young women in my institution normally we should mentor one but i had so many requests that i decided to take five and we were we had a schedule to meet every month with some tasks to do for each of us and we are still meeting three times a year now, uh, almost 16 years ago, after, sorry. So uh, it is just the time for a specific program, but the relation, uh, of course, will be evaluated as you, we go, because we want to always improve and support a maximum each mentee and each mentor, but uh, it's not a stop in time going to be different in time. I also say that I we will love to make a uh, nature uh, to, to, to grow all the mentees now to them are in time to become mentors because the need are so huge on our continent and other continents that uh, it's something so there will be there will be continuation shift in relation but certainly not to stop. Thank you, Professor Agnes. Um, I have a, another question from a participant who asked about uh, the most common challenge that uh, mentees face in their relationship with mentors. Um, I'm happy to go first again. I can talk from personal experience. One of the reasons that I am very committed to mentorship and the value is because um, I was very jealous as I was listening to Eric talk about um, the uh, wonderful experience he's had with mentors. Because when I started, I actually had really awful mentors. Uh, this was the classic mentor, either you will be exactly what I am or not. I was working in a lab, HIV was happening, I wanted to switch careers and um, had got very negative feedback and essentially was told I would never get a grant again because I gave back a, a federal grant to do that. Um, so it was both inspiring, but also inspiring me to be a mentor. So I think the challenges that you have are not all mentor-mentee relationships work out. It could be that people have different personalities, different, um, uh, different priorities. Not all mentors know how to mentor, um, you know, just sort of being, being honest with you. And again, as you change, um, you know, I, I'm very much a fan of the, the matrix, the mentor matrix, which is it could be that you maybe move on from that person and you need to actually work with somebody else. And it's very difficult to do the, I think that was the C, the candid, um, because there is power relationships, you know, to be perfectly honest about it. And it can be very difficult to do that. So I think um, as you're entering that relationship, to sort of set some of those guidances. What do we do if things are not working out well? Um, how do you manage that? And I would also very much suggest, and this is obviously difficult with virtual mentoring, do not do it by email. In addition to the email, <laughs> um, the uh, the challenge that, 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 that Catherine pointed out, there's many other ones that I've run into. So, you know, say, I'd love to discuss something. Can we have a call? Can we do something? And um, recognize that it's challenging to do that. Practice the discussions you may have with somebody else, but upfront have a discussion with with the mentor. What to do if things are not going well on either side? Catherine, do you have an experience? Maybe, maybe I can add one thing. This is Eric. Oh, sorry, Eric, go ahead. Yeah, I think for me the main thing is time. 
Uh, and then when I talk about time, uh, what I've seen in practice, it works both ways. So, for example, uh, I have had cases when uh, somebody like a sort of entrepreneur we work with asked to be to speak to somebody very senior, like a business person, and tell them, okay, no problem, I'm happy to, to talk to them, do like a one-time like mentorship kind of session. Uh, and the entrepreneur shows up late, right? Uh, which obviously is not good at all. And then it really derails the whole relationship because the person is thinking, I'm very busy, I'm giving my time, and you as a mentee is not, are not able to, to show up on time, right? I've also seen cases where, where mentees are looking, are running after the mentors for weeks at a time, and the mentors are unable to find even an hour. So this issue of time management and being able to find the right balance is very, very important. Uh, to me, that's really the thing that I wanted to contribute. Good. Thank you. The thing so, you have an experience, yeah, the thing I was going to say is, um, I mean, I think this is the the questions you're having about, and I think I, there was a question in chat uh, that I'm not looking at right now, but it was it said, you know, I mentioned that relationships don't always work. Menti, men, uh, what do you do in that? And I think this is something where it would be very interesting for the, the program um, and uh, to put in some structures to deal with that. And um, so maybe, you know, you say up front, we really hope all these relationships work. We understand that some of them may not, you know, not every friendship, not every date leads to marriage. And we get that. And we're gonna be honest about that a good, you know, and we're gonna encourage candor about that. And maybe you send out a quick, you know, a, a, a quick email to all the mentees and mentors every six months and say, is this relationship progressing? Is it on track? You know, do you think it's time to make a switch? Um, or maybe you give opportunities for people to, you know, I don't know exactly how you do that because I think it's obviously, it can be awkward yeah. and painful. But if we have a learning orientation, we also realize like, I don't want to be a mentor to somebody who thinks I'm not helping them. <laughs> and I certainly don't want to be a mentee to somebody where I think yeah. I'm a burden to them or this is not a good fit. So I think this is something where Absolutely. the program can really help and, and you know, exactly how is gonna be a challenge, but, but you guys are in a really a, a good position to help mentees and mentors make this work. I'm also looking at the clock and realizing I'm gonna to have to hop off in a minute. Uh, and I know we don't have many more minutes for everybody. Yes. Uh, but, uh, Yes, I, I think that uh, the, there is uh, three other questions that are very interesting. What I can say is that, uh, Sion, we can answer those questions to the, uh, to the network of mentors and mentees. We will not finish all the questions as it is now, but each question that has been asked will be answered and uh, are very interesting. Don't forget that we are innovating. It's a new program. It's over four continents. Uh, a multi a multicultural uh, approach in, in, in the substance and in the fact and in the time. So we are learning all together and we will adapt as, as we go. There is a lot of great um, uh, proposition that has been given today. Uh, we will continue the discussion, in my point of view, uh, via email because we may in very little time, uh, Catherine, uh, Eric, uh, and Sion, uh, and all the others that are online. Yeah. Sion? Uh, thank you, Professor Agnes. Uh, it was a very uh, interesting um, discussion, given that we had such a short period of time. Uh, we talked about uh, how to make relationships work, um, that mentorship instru is instrumental for both the mentor and mentee, um, putting the importance of putting a structure around the mentorship, the time, the education. Uh, and mentees in the coming months, uh, we will uh, follow up on that. But uh, given the, the short period of time uh, we are left with, I would like to thank our mentors, uh, our speakers here who have dedicated their time uh, and also our audience for um, their active participation. Uh, and I would also like to thank our VC um, for the continued um, coaching and mentorship she provides uh, for us uh, who are working on this. Uh, so thank you for all uh, your contributions. Um, any questions we have, 
uh, participants have, you can forward it to me and we'll see how uh, we can respond to that. So we have the question um, uh, in uh, the um, uh, chat and there is a great one about the indicators and evaluation. Uh, we will share all where, uh, what we will do and where we are going. So, and yes, can I just um, highlight one also that Catherine Chu, which is to have a similar um, uh, session for the mentees and whether that's being planned. Uh, this is a session for everybody. There is ah. mentors and there is mentee. Great. Now they are going to have session for mentors only. And they are going to have session for mentees only. We are going to set up together mentors and mentees, the indicators that will measure how we are performing. Mentors and mentees. Uh, when I say that uh, after two years, there is a convening in Kigali, it's a convening to analyze the progress we have helped people to have as mentors and as mentees, and what we have to improve as the program is continuing. Because at the end of this year, we recruit the second cohort for two years, but it will continue. It's an ongoing program. So, uh, yes, and it's um, uh, we will set up some training session for mentors, training session for mentees, and we will um, ask the advice of each and everyone, what are the needs for the group we are? Uh, thank you, Professor Agnes. And I would also like to note that the mentor-mentee uh, matching has already been done and introductions will be um, done in the coming week. Uh, we will provide, we have already provided the guidelines for mentors, but we will do something similar to uh, mentees as well. Um, so feel free to reach out with any questions, concerns. Absolutely. And we, we look forward to another such engagement. Thank you for your participation here.